Hi there guys. I wasn't sure how to play this actually. I just finished a project and uh, quite a lot of the way through I was sort of keeping it as a mystery thing, you know, keep you guessing. And then I thought, well, I might as well give an intro of some sort, which makes a little bit at the end uh, slightly superfluous. But anyway, <laughs> bear with it. Uh, what we've done is this, and you'll see more detail on it as you go through. I, I've got two wiper motors which I intend to use, one for the Z, one for the X. Goodness knows when I'll get it done. And in the short term, for those occasions when I want to get a quick fix, particularly on the Z, um, we got this. Doesn't look very complicated really, does it? Just a, a block with two pins and a centerpiece which almost engages over an acorn nut. The speed control is okay, not perfect, but it's okay. But it certainly pulls the uh, column up pretty quick. Um, X-axis, probably not so worried about that unless I've got to go a major traverse, but even then it might speed things up. I'm getting used to it. it takes a little bit of a feel just to get into the hand wheels, which incidentally was the first job almost, preparing the hand wheels. So there it is. It's my temporary fix. It may well last me for weeks or months until I get something better. But uh, I just had to do it. And in the meantime, as I mentioned in one or two clips, uh, the lathe's got a problem. It's a combination of uh, motor, pulley. Uh, it's an adjustable width pulley for speed, but something is sort of a bit locked up. doesn't feel good at all. So that's got to be dealt with. So whatever follows next uh, it will depend on time and everything else. So anyway, there we are. Um, prepare yourselves for what was perhaps initially a mystery tour. <laughs> but it shows all the work involved in putting this darn thing together. Quite a bit more work than I'd thought initially, actually. All right, so brace yourselves. Here we go. So, you may wonder, what's the old bugger up to now? <laughs> this is a sort of hair, hair-brained scheme. Best way to describe it. And probably when I, if it's remotely successful, I'll put an intro on the front. But for the time being, we've got... Um, one of the X-Drive hand wheels, secured between leather and levelled. Uh, there's a little slug in the middle. I turned down to a piece of 10mm, <coughs> put a 3 16 hole in, and I got a piece of 3 16 ground rod just to get a centre within a small 2 or 3 thou, which is the only accuracy we need. What we're going to do then is drill a hole in the web each side here and we're hoping to do the same on the z-drive or z-axis hand wheel so uh, I'm hoping that with this angle I can get in with a 3 8 milling cutter to do what I need and <laughs> we'll see if that's going to work there's quite a bit to do actually for this weird scheme of mine so I'll uh, come back in a little bit. We've done one side. I'll try and show you some of this. It's an awkward angle. I'm not even sure where the camera's level. Probably level enough, we'll see.
just had enough travel on that milling cutter. So you can see we've got a 3 8 hole there. Now we've got, uh, it's on two and a quarter inch centres that is. Now we've got to try and do the hand wheel for the uh, Z. So we've got to set up all over again. Well this one on the Z handle, not so easy. Couldn't use the vice at all, it just wasn't stable. So I put the uh, little centering pin, that, that's, that's all it is. I just lashed that up real quick. So we're on center, X and Y. Um, so I've got half inch parallels and uh, <coughs> clamps. Oh, this one is a fiddle. I was trying to cheat with the uh, clamps, but uh, not very reliable without packing there, so I've done them properly. And brought the uh, parallels back a bit for safety. And there's my centering, so I've just got to change that uh, collet over again and then, at last, make my holes. I got the first one done, but I have to be a bit careful coming out of the uh, hole because the, uh, the mill tends to want to grab a bit, so I've got to be a bit careful at the last bit. I'm just got to readjust the... I've got the table locked, but I've got to just... I just noticed the DRO wasn't quite uh, 1.125. All right, see if we can get this one done. Get a slightly better angle. Let's try that. through a little bit better than the uh, other side. Didn't seem to grab so much. You're probably still wondering what the heck's the old man up to. <laughs> uh, this may be a total disaster but I'm going to give it a try. All may become clear if we get further and actually get a result. So Let's move on to the next step. And the next stage of this experiment, I need a round slug, shall we call it. Um, I'm aiming for two and three quarters. You'll find out why later, if I get it right. <laughs> Now this really old chunk of 3 inch, as usual, no idea what it is, haven't faced off yet, I'll do that when I get down to diameter. Um, being a bit large I'm running fairly slow on the back gear and I'm just taking progressive cuts that are not too heavy.
check out for size. And I think we've only got, I've taken a good few more passes here. And about seven thou left. And this is not a super critical. I'll take a three and a half thou off the on the cut here and uh, where it finishes is where it finishes I think. It's not too bad. Let's see if we're close enough to being on the money. Half a thou under for turn three quarter. That's quite adequate. Now I'm just going to face this off. I've unfortunately I've got the end of a drill hole here. But uh, what would I've actually machined probably twice as much as I need. Uh, so I can cut a slice off in the bandsaw and uh, get the other side faced and then we've got to work out um, actually you can do the most of that in the mill I think we'll have to see what works best well, I'm running out of back gear now so we're in main drive um, I think I'll get down to get rid of that depression there. Um, running a little bit fast for deep cuts, so I'm just working at it. These sort of more or less roughing at the moment, and then I've got another tool I'll put in to give it a finishing cut or two. carry on till that's gone and I'll come back to you when we do a finishing cut. There's a little pimple left in the middle so I'll try and take a finishing cut or two. This, um, this was a homemade tool holder I happen to have I don't know about three or four of these little buttons. You can't take a heavy cut but uh, having such a large radius it can give quite a nice finish. I'll try that here and take one or two passes with it. Let's lock up the carriage. Still a slight pimple there. You might be able to see, I'm not sure, the difference in finish. That was a slow feed with a fine cut, but that uh, round button does quite nice on that. I'm going to take another two or three and uh, then we'll probably go to the bandsaw and cut a chunk off here. I just put a slight chamfer on this. It'll do there and now we've just got to go and cut this off to some depth or other which I must yet decide. I've changed the jaws in the chuck and uh, got this set up. This is the uh, as sawn finish and it's never totally square. In fact if you can see that black mark 
I've really got quite a lot of material I want to take off. But uh, never knowing quite how the saw cut's going to work out, I worked that way, so I just have to keep relieving some uh, thickness on here. see that it was out of square which I expect and I suppose a cut over two and three quarters with only a few thou out of square isn't too bad really that was only a few thou I took off so I'm going to work this down to a thickness that I'm going to find usable whether I then do something uh, central with a bore I may leave that to the mill be a bit more accurate Well, down to three quarter, I've just taken a light finish cut with my little button insert. Feels quite nice. I've got to get a chamfer on there, and we'll have to turn the tool post, I think, because the way the chuck is. That's enough. Now to decide what the heck to do next. <laughs> oh, yeah, on the fly, that's usual. Well, here's the block set up. Um, spare old three jaw chuck, which has outside jaws, which is fairly convenient. Uh, we've got it clamped down. I'm just trying to get it centered. I've got the little center mark that I made in the lathe, but I'm actually checking this on the uh, coax indicator it may or may not be possible to see the dial on here because of uh, let's turn that I don't know whether that makes it possibly more visible I've got it fairly close whether I can get absolutely spot on I'm not sure That was X. Let's check Y. It's probably, I think, just about as close as I can get it. Let's go off again. All right, that's um, that's as close as it need be. This is not high precision, but we want a fairly accurate layout on here between a centre hole for a shaft and a hole each side on two and a quarter inch centres for some uh, pins. Just spotting these uh, holes to start with. I think we'll do some uh, pilot holes before we move up to the final sizes. get the other one down here then we'll get some larger sizes. I'll probably uh, put an intro to this video at the moment. If I don't do that or hadn't done that 
you still think what the heck's this man doing? But um, if this little experiment works all will become clear in terms of either success or abject failure. <laughs> so I'm going to carry on. Um, this is a number four which approximates my tapping drill size for my favourite British thread, BSF, quarter. <coughs> and we're going to go through with that on both of these. Then these will be, uh, we'll drill those down. I think we'll use a milling cutter there to get a nice pocket to about halfway down so that the pin that's going to go in there will sit nicely in the cup and also thread down so we've got plenty of depth to play with there. All right we've drilled the number four holes we've enlarged here to uh, um, 3164 got a rather tacky old half inch reamer there but I'm just going to run that through the shaft has actually got to be turned yet so it's perhaps not overly critical but uh, we'll do that anyway and get a half inch I can't get through that block very far because of the chuck. I guess the collet wasn't really quite tightened up and it was just the last eighth or sixteenth that we had to finish going through, that's done now. So we've got to make a couple of pockets here for three eighth. I'm going down to uh, about 450 here which is the main support for the three eighth pin that's going in and a little bit of number four drilling at the bottom for tapping for my favourite thread. There's 450. We'll set up and do the other side. Uh, let's do this one. And then I think the block's finished in here. And then it'll be back to the uh, lathe, I think. Uh, pretty much finished in the mill I think this one I shall need the mill again probably for something else but what I've got to do now is make up the pins well, I've got to put some thread in the bottom of these where the small holes are and I'll probably manually put a countersink in there alright 